Divine Truth Events These are events and presentations by Jesus and Mary. This presentation is part of the Relationship with God series. The topic is Putting it all together. Presented by Jesus on the 10th of August 2013 in town of Mergen, Queensland, Australia. This is session one, part two. Jen, you want to ask? I can only honestly say that I've touched on my childhood fear a couple of times in five years. And those times were so... When the bar- that prison came down just a little bit, mm-hmm. was so terrifying, mm-hmm. the fear experiencing bodily that fear itself that I haven't been willing to go there I agree again yeah I agree so the question is is the tr- the tr- the adult side of me that builds the prison is really very justified you know I justify it you do because the f- when I feel that childhood fear, it, it like rationally, I tell myself I get a little slice of it yep. through it. So really, what but you're saying more, is f- more fear. I'm I'm terrified of that actual uh, um, loss of control. Yes, you're terrified of being overwhelmed. I'm not sure what the question is. It's just that. It's, it's very scary. It hasn't been a question yet. Can you ask one? So what are you asking, really? The little what, what's the thing you'd like to ask? That my childhood, my adult self is very, feels very justified to build that big brick wall and isolate myself. I agree. From the child, from what do you do with... Well, can it, yeah, can I ask you a question? What are you going to do about that? Well, I, I because t- no change is possible without you doing something about it. But that childhood field is hideous. It's yep, I agree. Whenever a person has been abused as a child, there's going to be terrible feelings involved. What do I want to do about it? Well, I, t- I could answer you and say I want to change it, but that's a lie. That's correct. It is a lie at the moment. That's why things haven't changed. You see, this is what I see happening constantly. Things have happened to us, right? Some of the things that have happened to us weren't under our own control at the time. Uh, Particularly if things happened to us when we were a child. Very damaging things happened to us when we were a child. They weren't under our control at the time. We had certain feelings associated with that as a child. But we are now an adult, right? We have control over what goes on in this system. This is our internal system. We have control of it. Your adult is going, I justify keeping this prison. Now, for as long as you justify keeping the prison, you will keep it. So you could stay in this state of keeping this prison, in a state of anger, really it is, if you think about it, and you're not even feeling it as anger yet. Right? You're not feeling how angry you are with God and with the universe and everything that, that God is expecting you to actually go through these emotions. To actually go through and go... Of course, God's saying, I will help you go through everything. But you don't really believe that. You don't have faith in that. You believe it's all just going to have to be you alone. Right? And you have no faith that after you've gone through that, that you'll be free. You don't have any faith in that either. This is why you've established the prison... You see the prison not as a prison. You see it as your protective walls against the world. Uh, and, and that's a great way of staying in a prison. You know? if, if you don't believe it's a prison anymore and you believe it's actually you know, your fortress instead, of course, there's a higher likelihood you'll stay in it. Right? So, so as the adult, you see this as your fortress and not your prison. So you're already seeing things in a flawed manner. It's your prison. It's controlling most of your life. It's controlling your relationships. It's controlling your soulmate relationship. It's controlling your relationship with God. It controls what's happening to your body even. Like in terms of physically what's happening with your body is all controlled by this. And you're unwilling to let it go because the adult's saying, 
the child is justified. I am justified holding on to this prison. I am justified having all these protective barriers up. I'm justified having all this fear. Uh, you know, it makes sense for me to have all this fear and keep it inside of me. It just feels like that childhood fear is, is it's bigger. It's, it, how can it be bigger, logically? How can it be bigger than you are yourself right now? It can't logically be bigger. It's an emotion that entered you as a child, as an adult. You now have the ability to release it. You now have the choice. And you are exercising your choice, your will. And by the way, you're not alone. The majority of people in the audience are exercising their will in their choice to maintain, in this adult state, anger about saying, that's where I want to be. I don't want to be any different to that. I, and the fact that God expects me to let go of stuff that I feel is too big for me to feel. And God's saying, no, no, no. Look, with me, everything, God is saying to you, with me, everything's possible. You can feel anything with me. That's what God's saying. But you don't trust that yet. And because you don't trust that and have faith in that, you don't want to exercise your will in the direction of release. And because you don't exercise your will in the direction of release, you spend five years complaining about what's happened in your life in the past and not changing. And the only person who has the most pain from that is you. Like, can, can you see? It's like by not releasing, the only person in, who, who retains the pain is yourself. Of course, you impose this pain upon others, so you actually cause pain for others during that place as well. But the person in the largest amount of pain for not dealing with something inside of yourself is yourself. That's the reality. And the majority of us don't want to hear that. The majority of what want to hear, there's got to be another way. You feel at the moment that God should make some other way for you to become at one with God, other than you having to feel you. I was just thinking that as you were talking. Mm. There has to be another way. There has to be another way. And, and in fact, many of you have actually spent the last five years trying to find another way. <laughs> More than you've spent trying to practice the basics to lead you this way. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. You've spent most of your time trying to find an alternative. Of course, every alternative doesn't make any logical sense. It doesn't make any, you know, it's not truthful. It's not emotional in its way. So it doesn't have any effect in the long run. And eventually you come around to think, yeah, maybe there is only one way. But when a person is told there is only one way to God initially, they go, no, that's not the case. There's got to be millions of ways to God. There's got to be infinite ways to God. And I'm saying, no, no, I'm sorry. There's only one way to God that God actually created. And that way is going to mean involving experiencing yourself. And that means experiencing every single thing inside of you. That means that God created you with the capacity and ability to feel everything that's happened to you in the past. No matter how traumatic and how bad it's been. When I'm in that childhood fear, mm -hmm. I don't have that ability to trust. It's... No, I, see, I would suggest to you that when you're in the childhood fear truly, you will trust implicitly. You're not in the childhood fear yet. You're in, you've got the adult constantly monitoring how much the fear, how big the fear is getting. And in your case, it's terror that you need to experience, right? So you've got terror to experience. And the adult is maintaining the boundary. So the adult you is saying to the child you, if you like, you are only allowed to feel your terror until I get freaked out. And the child wants to let go of all of its terror. And the adult's saying, no, you can only let go of the terror till I get freaked out, the adult, till it's too much for me. So it's actually the adult that's got the problem, not the child. The child wants to let it all go. If, if, you, look at our, if you look at your own children, any of you who've got children, you know that if you let your child cry, it will get to a point where it finishes. And a lot of times, if you control the child's crying, it goes longer than when the child if, would just let to cry by itself. That's the reality. Now, I've had two children. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to those kind of issues. What happens as an adult? is we want to control the child because not because of the child going through a bad experience because often the child doesn't feel it is it's because we are going to get triggered by the child's experience 
and we try to shut down the child. The whole reason why most of the time we can't cope with a child crying is because we don't want to cry. The adult doesn't want to. Now, if you apply that to yourself, you will see that your child has lots of different emotions to feel, right? Some anger, terror, fear, grief, and the big one that many people avoid, shame, right? The child has a lot of emotions it wants to feel, but the adult goes, you can only feel that in amongst the boundary I create for you. Because you're, you're in, beyond that boundary, you're afraid of what? Going crazy. Uh, you're not? Going crazy. Always being there. What, what would you call that when you feel like you're going to always stay in a certain emotion? Like you have a false belief in, in, for many of us that if we start crying, we'll never finish. Does that make sense? The fear of craziness is definite, is definite and mental, mental illness that I'm going to... Certainly. That, that the, emo, but even, that the, fear, the fear and... and but even bigger for you is your fear of your own shame. Yeah. You know, your father yeah. blamed you for his abuse of you and you've now taken that on and you now believe that you must have somehow asked for this abuse to occur and the feeling of that shame is so great that you, adult you, wants to prevent it. Does that make sense? And so it, it creates a boundary. The adult you creates the boundaries not the child. The child wants to feel. The child always wanted to feel. Right? It's only the adults around us, our parents initially, our environment, but then eventually ourselves. Right now it's ourselves, the majority of us, create the boundaries that allow what we will experience. And we are locked into that. And we're not willing to stretch that. We're not willing to go beyond the boundaries. We're afraid of being this terrible word. Overwhelmed. We want to be whelmed, <laughs> if there is such a word. In other words, we want there to be a limit to what happens. We don't want to go beyond what we believe is our own personal limit. Now, God created you without limits. God created you with the ability to expand your limitations. Infinitely, in fact. That's what divine love as it's received in the soul transforms the soul in such a way as to making it become more infinite in its nature to experience and expand that can only happen by this part the overwhelming part but we don't want to go there the adult wants control the adult wants to avoid the fear the adult wants to have God as its fear And the adult generally forgets that God is God and instead believes their fear is God. Right? And as a result, they place these boundaries on every emotion and so you will only experience the emotion up until that point. The, the majority of you are facing this problem. The reason why we're stagnant in our progression in our relationship with God is because we are placing limitations upon the expressions of our emotions. That's what we're doing, constantly. And we're doing that because we believe we can't cope with anything more. We don't have any trust in God. We don't have any faith that, that God will be with us while we go through our emotional state, while we process through it all and come out the other side. <clears throat> A person who does that will never process through terror, will never process through fear, will never process through their own grief, will never process even through their anger. That's the limitation of doing it. You will never process through it to the point of completion. And this is one reason why many abuse survivors, for example, spend years and years and years and years going to psychotherapy and yet still never getting it all out of themselves. Right? I used to attend a, a meeting of what was called uh, adult survivors of childhood abuse. And... Many times, and I went to that, uh, meet, those meetings for five years, right, myself, and wh what I found was this, that the story they told me when I arrived at the meeting 
was the same story they were telling people five years later who arrived at the meeting for the first time. In other words, for five years, they had been going to see psychotherapists, visiting this meeting, talking about their abuse, and yet still the abuse was as raw as it was the day that I met them. And how did that occur? That occurred because they had placed limitations on their experience. That's the addiction. And, and if we place limitations on our experience, we will never get to the bottom of anything. We'll never get to the bottom of anything. And, and while it's great for you, Jen, to see that that's the case, the real question is, how long do you want this to last? That's the real question. Because to be frank with you, there are people in the spirit world now who've been there for a thousand years and they've wanted it to last for a thousand years. They, they, they are unwilling to face the abuse of their own childhood while they lived on earth from a thousand years ago. It is just as raw today for them as it was a thousand years ago when it occurred. Do you want that? Do you, do you want to change that? Because the only way to change that is by changing this person's beliefs, not the child. The child will be fine. The child is going to be under God's wing, working way through every emotion. The adult is the problem. The adult's the one who wants to control the process. All right? And this is our problem is that we're in this place, we're willing to throw away love, we're willing to throw away truth, we're willing to throw away humility, we're willing to throw away faith, we're willing to even throw away our own willpower just to maintain this structure right, which does not bring us any happiness. It's going to keep us in the same place we are today and in, and in 10 years' time, 50 years' time, 100 years' time, 200 years' time, 1,000 years' time, unless we change, we will be that person for that time. And this is where it all gets down, doesn't it, to this really wonderful quality, this humility quality. Because without humility, change is not possible. Humility allows you to experience something beyond which you feel you're capable of experiencing, but which God knows you are fully capable of experiencing. So you go Sandra in front. Hello, Jesus. How are you doing? Um, I'm just wondering, is it ever possible really for anyone to get through terror without God? Um, I don't believe it's possible without God. So. However, there are many people who are in the sixth dimension of the spirit world who believe they have released most of their terror without God. So, so. that I, what I was going to ask, can they actually, are they still in, like do they have those fears in them? Well, they have one primary fear still, which is a fear of having a relationship with God. So they still haven't released all their terror. But, but they've often released quite a, a lot because they realise sooner or later that they have to experience it in order to release it. So many people who are what you call the natural love path, many people who are on that path are actually releasing emotion by experiencing their emotion. They're just not doing it with God. They're not having a relationship with God that they're trying to develop during the process. They're not open to God's truth. But it is very hard. So it takes much longer because I guess... Of course. You imagine releasing your terror without having a backup person. No. You know, and I don't mean a backup person on earth. I mean, I mean God in that regard. It is difficult. It can be done because God created you to be able to release everything by yourself, actually. So it's basically just not trusting in God that people don't want to go there because if they trusted, they would allow themselves to go... To that, past no, that I feel a lot of the, the problems are relating to the trust of themselves. That God created within them the ability to feel everything. Like if we truly trusted God, we would understand that one fact about ourselves. That God created us in such a way that we're capable of experiencing everything. And particularly, we are capable of experiencing everything that happened in our past. Does that make sense? Like it's already happened. We've already experienced it. So we're definitely capable of experiencing it. Does that make sense? And, and particularly as an adult, we're definitely capable of experiencing it, considering that a lot of it, the very negative things that happened to us happened as a child. 
And so we're certainly capable as an adult to experience those things that we've happened as a child. The issue that most of us face is we don't want to. We don't want to feel a lot of these kind of feelings of being overwhelmed, feeling crazy, feeling stupid. Everyone around us telling us that we're nuts doing it and all those kind of things, that you've got to get control and you've got to get you know, rigid with yourself and you've got to move on and you've got to forget the past and all these kind of things, which you can't ever do unless you release the emotion because the emotional signature of the past will be carried with you wherever you go. Everywhere you go, you always take the weather. You know, that, that's true, you know. It's like everywhere you go, the internal weather system you are creating that you are not allowing change, you will take with you everywhere you go. You can, you can change locations. So you, you can move from the sunny coast to here. It doesn't change a single thing. You know, you can move from here to the spirit world. It doesn't change anything. It's only when you realise you're taking the weather with you and unless you face what the weather is inside of you, what, what you face, you know, unless what is inside of you you're willing to actually truthfully address and actually feel and you realise that, that any progression can occur. So, so do it. You know, make the choice to do it. Now, many of us have a lot of spirit um, interference with making that choice. We have a lot of you know, issues with making the choice personally. But the biggest issue that we really have most of the time is just we don't want to ever be overwhelmed. And yet it's the best feeling afterwards. It's of the course, best. because when you're overwhelmed, you release something and therefore there's a feeling of release. But it only happens when you're overwhelmed, generally. And for the majority of us, what we're trying to do is we're trying to f feel our feelings and act and do our life in very strict borders. We are trying to do it within these borders. And it's only when we're willing to actually feel beyond those borders that we've created that we finish up changing. This is a big problem for us. Yeah. For many of you men, if I, I've talked about some of the women's issues. Haven't for many of you men, you know what your primary fear is? Any idea what your primary fear is? Alex? Uh, been alone for the rest of, of your life without a woman? Yeah, let's uh, s narrow that down a little further, shall we? Why oh, is that funny? Why well, is that funny, yeah. I think because a lot of others feel the same thing. But go on. What, what would you... What from that is actually happening? Like... Oh, not feeling loved. Yes. But specific specifically as love from a woman, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so you're not interested in being loved by a man? Oh, to a degree, but not as much. Yeah, okay. So what, what is it that the love of a woman meant to give you? <clears throat> Wholeness. Okay, so you're feeling complete without it? Uh, yeah, probably. I don't, I'm not sure. Isn't it interesting that you put up your hand, though, with so much... Well, it's, it's what I've been going through. I agree, but you're not sure about it. Well, I don't, I don't know. I just, I've just i been going through a process with, with my partner of just actually I realised that I've actually got to go through a process of letting her go yep. rather than forcing everything and trying to make her be more loving and whatever else. So yeah, see, but your action has to be to, been in the past to try to force the woman into becoming more loving with you. Yes, so, but the average man in this audience doesn't do that. You know what he does? So you, you have tried, you've had demands that you've placed upon the woman in order for the woman to love you. Yep. The average man in the audience doesn't do that. They do the opposite. Mm. So what, what's the opposite to that? Come on, guys. You, you're the ones who feel these things. So if we go Paul over here. Um, please the woman. Yeah, pander to her every whim. Even when her whims are completely out of harmony with love, completely out of harmony with truth, completely out of harmony with humility for herself, completely out of harmony with any faith in God, completely out of harmony with even the exercise of your own free will, and, and yet you're willing to just pander, 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 in order, and the, and the belief that at some point in the future, she might love you, and you might get that feeling that she loves you. And of course, the more you do for her, the less you feel loved which is the law, in fact. 
God's law is the more you do for other people that you're giving them out of feeding and addiction, the less you're going to feel something, not more. Uh, that's the law. Do you know what most of us guys need to learn? It's to have a backbone. Yeah? That's what we need to learn. To have a backbone in terms of honour love, honour truth, honour humility, honour faith, honour will. Honour these things with your partner. Forget about trying to get her approval. If you do those things, you will automatically have the approval of every other person that does those things. Now, if your partner's not one of those people, then you're not going to have her approval ever, actually. Until she also honours love, honours truth, honours humility, honours faith and honours will, you are not ever going to have any decent relationship. Right? That's reality. And you can panda, panda, panda all you like, but you're not going to have any relationship until you honour those particular things. And she might then go through a huge amount of rage with you and leave you and all those other things and you have to feel your emotions. That's what humility would do. You'd have to still tell her the truth. No, I'm not going to do what you want because you're just trying to control me. And tell her the truth. Even though she might leave you as a result of you telling her the truth. You would have to do that. For the majority of you guys, you are just pandering over and over again. For the same, like for the, in the end, for the same goal that Alex mentioned, but Alex does a different thing than most of you do. Alex tried to push the woman into doing that for him. You are trying to cajole the woman into doing that for you. Can you see that? For the majority of you guys, can you see that? Yeah, it's happening all the time for many of you. Paul? Um, is the bottom line fear that, um, is it coming from like yeah, what, what you asked Alex, is that I'm not okay? Of course the bottom line is fear. Whenever we do any of these things, whenever we sacrifice all of these things, or one of them even, Fear is always the bottom line. Mm. So what would the fear be? Yeah, the fear that I'm not okay. Fear so, that I'm not okay, yes. So, so I need approval to be... Uh, but so. you don't feel that you're not okay when you're with other men. Well... To, definitely for you, it's a much less feeling, isn't it? You feel a lot more mm. equal with other men. But when it comes to that specific relationship with the partner, now you feel that you're not okay unless... You do everything she wants and then she makes you feel like you're okay. Right? So it's certainly a problem, isn't it? That, that feeling. But it could be many other feelings. And the truth is, all we'd be doing is guessing all of the feelings until we decide to have the humility to feel them, to feel our fear, firstly, of what it is we're trying to achieve. So, so you, know, you know that your wife or your partner wants you to do something and you don't really want to do it. And what you do is you just sit there and go, I don't really want to do this, but I know she wants me to do it. And I know she's going to get upset with me if I don't do it. And if you just sit there and feel that, you'll start to feel why you feel so addicted to doing that. And you feel the fear of it, you know, what it feels like to receive her disapproval so strongly. What does it feel like? And a lot of you feel gutted. Totally gutted just to receive a woman's disapproval. That's the reason why you have no backbone with women. Because you feel gutted when the disapproval comes at you. And so if you felt it and did not act instead and just felt it, you would work out what's under it. You would work out what fear is under it. What it is that you're afraid of. Now for some of you, it's afraid of that you'll never have sex the rest of your life. Right, because the only way you have sex is by doing exactly what the woman wants. Right? For some of you, it's this, so you're, in other words, you're in a bartering system for sex. For some of you, it's like that. For some of you, it, you're in a bartering system for approval. So in other words, you try to do everything possible to make the woman just have a good feeling about you. So the woman feels like, oh, he's a lovely person or he's a lovely man. Or some of you are bartering for the feeling of sexual attraction coming from your partner. In other words, that your partner wants you. Right? Some of you are bartering for the feeling that you're better than any other man. 
In other words, you want to feel that you're better in her eyes than any other man. Some of you are looking for that. But whatever the reason is, you're not going to find it until you feel what the fear is that's on top of it. Right? And the only way you're going to feel what the fear is is by stop pandering <laughs> and feel the barrage of rage that comes from her and feel what you feel like as a result and be humble to that emotion. Many of you are not humble to that emotion. You get the barrage of rage and then what happens is you get in a rage in response. Right? You get the disapproval from her and then you feel really angry that you've gotten the disapproval. You get the desire to control from her and you get really angry that now she wants to control you. Right? Rather than feeling the grief that comes with the feelings, if we're humble, that's what we'll do, feel the grief that comes with the feeling of not being approved of, not being loved, not being wanted, not being sexually acceptable and all these other emotions that might come up as a result. We're locked into the concept that we can only go a certain way and the rest is their fault. They need to change first, is what we're always thinking. And we're not being an adult about it because we're not saying, well, obviously this feeling is inside of me. If I, if, as, as you said, Paul, if I feel good about myself, if the woman wanted me to do something that was out of harmony with these things, I would draw the line and say, no, I can't do that. No matter what the result. If it meant she walked out the door and walked off with another guy, you'd still have the line. And I would say if she walked off with another guy, for you having a line that's drawn down those qualities, then it means she's not very like, focused on those qualities herself. And a lot of times we don't want to find that out either. Right. So, so we need to allow ourselves to confront, let's just move this around a bit, allow ourselves to confront these boundaries that we're placing there. Now, for many of you guys, the reason why you're not having a close relationship with God is because you do not want to feel many of those emotions. You just don't want to feel them. You'd rather get angry or you'd rather avoid them. Or for many of you, you'd rather just get busy. Right? You'd rather busy yourself up, you know. You don't want to spend time with the girl because every time you spend time with the girl it causes you these certain fears and particularly the grief to be triggered that you don't want to feel and so it's better if you're busy doing this or busy doing that or you know so we become workaholics a lot of men become alcoholics as well that's busy drinking to get rid of the fear and in particular to get rid of the fear of the grief that's present within them Every man who's an alcoholic is full of grief about his relationship with his partner generally. Right. Full of grief. And yet he doesn't want to feel it. Right. And if we were to progress towards God, we only need to feel it. Because if we're going to progress towards God, these are the things that put it all together. And if we're going to compromise any one of those things for the sake of a personal fear, we're not going to have it all together when it comes to our relationship with God. We can't avoid doing those things and expect to still get a relationship with God. God is not going to conform to you. God's not going to somehow modify her universe to suit Alan John Miller. Right? God doesn't do that. And it doesn't matter who you are, God doesn't do it for you. Which makes sense. God created a perfect universe. If God modified it, then it would no longer be perfect. So God can't do that. God's already created a perfect universe and it's up to us to decide to either conform to the way it works or not. That's our choice. If we don't, there will be certain pains that we will have which are all governed by how much fear that we're willing to experience in the end. So what I would like to encourage many of you to do is to examine yourselves again. I've encouraged you many times before to examine yourselves, but I want to encourage you to examine yourselves again. Many of you who believe you're going very well are doing very badly actually when it comes to your relationship with God. 
Many of you don't realize it, but actually you're still in the hells of the spirit world if you pass today. You believe that that's not true, but you would be. Primarily because of your fear. Primarily because of what you honor. God, your God is your fear, and that's what you honor. Many, for many of you, you justify not doing these things to yourself. Right? That's what you do. And you can't expect to get closer to God that way. You can't expect to be happier that way if you keep justifying to yourself what's going on. But you do. Keep doing it. And what I suggest to you is find out why and feel why you want to do that. Feel why. Why do you want to do that? So for, for you ladies who are single, feel why you want to be single. Feel it. Really feel it. Be honest with yourself about it. How much control you want. How much you want somebody who you believe is perfect. Some of you even know who your soulmates are and you're making no attempt whatsoever to do anything about it because you don't like them. You don't. Some of you know who they are and you don't like them. Like how, how arrogant and condescending is that? God, like That's the other half of you and you don't like them. Do you think you're in a better place than that part of you if you don't like them, if you don't like what God has created as the other half of you? I don't think so. So you might arrogantly assume that you're much better than he is and you're going to wait until he gets into some kind of condition before you'll engage him or before you'll do anything about yourself and your own attitudes about the opposite gender, right? And you look down upon him and you criticise him and you think, and you go, oh, I wish I had another soulmate. Any soulmate other than him would be better, right? And in that moment, you have no idea how far away from God you are. We often also see here in the group different things going on and we go, what... People can come for five years and learn about love and still treat people badly in the audience that they're learning about love with. That, that doesn't make any sense to me. Many of you withdraw from truthful exchanges with people. You know what I mean by that? You can feel how much you don't want to engage a certain person, right? They, they walk up to you every time and they have to say something to you or they try to engage you and you don't want to engage them and you don't say to them, oh, look, I don't want to engage you and to be frank with you, I can see there's an issue of love there and I can see that I need to work out what it is and it could be an issue of love in the other person, couldn't it? That you need to discover what it is and uh, as to why you don't want to engage them. Better let yourself see it for a change. Ask yourself, why is it that you can't love all of your brothers and sisters on earth? Ask yourself why. There's always a re good re a reason. It's usually a fear-based one that you need to feel, but it's a good re one to find because it, then you'll release something in the end. Like I, I can't see how the truth can grow on the planet when the people who have heard the truth for the longest period of time are still in huge disagreement with it inside of their souls. Do you, do you know what I mean by that? Like it's like, it's like we're so focused on rebellion with God and God's laws and the basic five principles of what we're going to need that it's like we're fighting every step of the way. And how can divine truth on the planet grow as a, as a, you know, how can God's truth on the planet grow when we ourselves actively, those of us who have heard it, actively decide to work against what we've heard? Can you see, like... It's get, it gets to the point where there needs to be a whole new crop of people who hear divine truth for the first time who go, yeah, I'm really enthusiastic about that. But sooner or later, they're going to hit the same barriers we're in, aren't they? They're going to hit the same fear-constructed barriers, you know, and finish up doing what we finish up doing. So how are we going to get through that? 
We are only going to get through that by choosing to put it all together and focus our whole life on developing these particular things. That's the only way we're going to focus, do it, isn't it? Okay. So what do you feel about that? And be honest. How many of you know that you feel stagnant? How many of you know? Yeah. <clears throat> so a lot. What have you blamed? Has it been because AJ and Mary haven't given enough talks on certain subjects? Or it's because, you know, AJ is flitting all over the countryside and he can't give me the personal help that I need to grow. Or what, what is it that you blame? Is it your partner, you know? like They just don't change fast enough. What, what is it that you blame internally? Have you thought about it? Do I? You want to... I feel like I blame myself a lot. Like, yep. I do um, feel like... Um, I see a lot of my limitations and um, in uh, some of those areas that you've talked about today. Um, do, do you feel blaming yourself is loving yourself? No, it's not. Okay. And so can you see that you have obviously an addiction to blaming yourself? Yep. yep. So, so have you given much thought about what that addiction would be? Um, I feel like in blaming myself I can avoid taking responsibility. I agree. Um, and I feel like in blaming myself, I want to. I avoid um, feeling a lot of my rage about. So you avoid feeling specific emotions that you really don't want to feel. Yeah. Yep, okay. Yeah. So Agreed. I've started to like really like take a little bit more responsibility. I feel about that. Yep. Um, and I can avoid um, really feeling my fears. I of, agree. Of. Of. <laughs> <laughs> the truth about myself, I feel like, and my fears of um, my what I'm afraid I won't be able to achieve, or um, that yes, I'm. I don't know if I agree with this. Where okay. you think your fears are? Okay. Um, it's like you're blaming yourself for your fears, but the reality is you're terrified. Of other people's opinions. I am, really. And yeah. so that's not afraid of yourself. Yeah. That's afraid of what other people think of you. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that's... Yeah. yeah, I agree, I am. And you're terrified of spirit's opinions of you. Yep. Yeah, which, which means you're terrified of them and what they'll do if you actually don't blame yourself. Does that yes. make sense? Yes, yes. So, you see, a lot of the times what you finish up... What I feel people finish up doing when they blame themselves... Blaming themselves is an avoidance of other issues. Yeah. Blaming yourself is an avoidance of personal responsibility, for example. Right? Yeah. When you blame yourself, you ironically get to not take responsibility. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Blaming yourself also is a way of preventing how you feel about yourself. So in other words, preventing shame, preventing yeah. those kind of emotions that make you feel terrible about yourself. But blaming yourself, the main reason why we blame ourselves, as I've talked to you about before, is because we get away from other people blaming us when we blame ourselves. Yeah. In other words, we avoid the attack of other people by blaming ourselves. So that's the addiction. Yeah. So my suggestion is to look at the addiction of blaming yourself. So I don't feel that blaming yourself is actually so much of an emotion as an addiction to get away from other emotions that you don't feel you can cope with. Yeah. yeah? I, I've, I've noticed um, how lately, like this, the terror that comes up when um, I want to speak up or I feel like I want to speak up for myself in an environment where I'm really feeling like nobody else is going to agree with so why that. would you want to speak up in an environment where nobody else agrees 
to challenge that? No. Yeah, see, I feel my preferred option there would be just to walk away from that group of people. So why do you feel like you have to stay and speak up rather than just walk away? Oh, I guess I'm like, at the moment it's because I've got a job and I guess I'm afraid I'm not going to survive if I don't do these things in the world. Yeah. Yep. See, I feel a lot of these things, though, get created by other emotions that we are unwilling to feel. Do you follow, follow me? See, a lot of times, what I notice, many of you doing speaking up, you, like you say, you're speaking up for truth. Many times that's not what I see happening. What I see happening is you're not understanding that most of the time you're not being loving in that place. And you feel like you have to speak up for what they're doing to you. But in fact, what's happening is you're projecting already something on them and they're just responding to you. That's, that's what I notice happening a lot. Like we, we often get emails from people saying, oh, you know, what, we, what I've worked out is that we need to tell the truth to everyone around us, you know, and be examples of truth. And I go, yeah, okay, let's be examples of truth. Let's really be examples of truth. If we're really an example of truth, the very first quality we're going to display is probably humility. Right? And if, if humility is the first quality we're going to display, then that means that we will feel our own emotions before we'll try to address somebody else's. It won't be the other way around. And what I notice many of you doing is addressing the other people's emotion before you've even felt your own. So to me, that's not a mark of humility. That's not telling the truth. Telling the truth would be, be humble first, feel your own emotion first, and then, if there is still something to correct, maybe correct it in a more public setting or you know, in a, in a directly with the individuals. But the question also has to be asked, if they aren't asking you for assistance and they don't want assistance in their heart, then if you can leave them, then just leave them. Why aren't you leaving them? Right? If, they, if you're in a job and you know you have to have the job for whatever reason, then why aren't you doing the best things you possibly can to conform to everything the person wants? See, to me, having a job means that I would be... Like if I was a window cleaning and I was working for somebody and they told me to climb on a big ladder to window clean, I would look at the safest way I could climb up the window and do the window. I wouldn't complain about that it's unsafe and I wouldn't do all these other things. I would want to serve. Many of us don't want to serve unless we get something in return. Yeah, I, I feel like um, that I am, like, there's a lot in this job that I really um, feel um, is loving and the whole, I guess, the um, focus is a loving focus. Mm -hmm. um, I, f I guess in the sense of speaking up for myself, it's in an environment where I'm encouraged to yeah. just... And, but I can feel my terror of their opinion of me, I guess, mm. if when I do speak just what I want, you know, yep. but I'm being asked to say it. Like. This is why I'm saying to you, one of your primary fears is your fear of other people's opinion. Yeah. And, and that's certainly a fear that you definitely have. Yeah. And I feel that many here have it. This is one reason why we don't tell the truth when we're asked the truth. Mm. We don't, still don't tell it yeah. because we're afraid of other people's opinions. Yeah. But that's not the same as forcing your opinion on the other person, is it? No. 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 And there's many of you who want to force your opinions on other people. Yeah. And that's not a loving course of action, actually. That's a demand being placed on the other person. Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. So the question I asked was, what do you feel about the, these issues that I'm raising with you? What, what's... What do you feel is going on for you inside of these issues? Like, so for, for you ladies who are, who are struggling with feeling like you really do want a relationship, many of you, what I feel from you is that you want a relationship, but you want it all on your terms, a whole lot of it. You want everything to be exactly what, how you want it to be. You want him to look a certain way, be a certain height, be a certain size, you know, have a certain youthful type of vigour, depending on your own, and have uh, you want him to be safe and secure, you want him to be financially safe and secure, you want him to be sound, 
And, and like, it's like, you're all of these things? Are you? Well, but, but you want them to be all of these things. Why is that? Like, what's going on there? Isn't it that you're unwilling to see your own self and yet you're to you, you believe somehow that you deserve this? I, I don't know. Like, what's going on for you? What do you feel? See, I, what, I, what I think is happening for many of us is that we have a very, very false sense of ourselves. And that's what I feel is our primary issue. It's a lack of humility. In other words, remember part of humility is seeing yourself as God sees you. All right? Not as you want to be seen. Not as you believe you should be seen. But as God actually sees you. Now, if you do that, I feel you will see very many things about yourself that you can change. But I feel many of you are terrified of seeing yourself as God sees you. And I don't really understand that given the fact that God already sees it. <laughs> it's not like you're going to uh, protect yourself from God in some way by coming to see how God sees you. Does that make sense? God already sees these things inside of you. And God is waiting for you to see these things yourself. So if God already sees the way you are, then surely it would make sense for you to want to see yourself in the same manner rather than trying to protect yourself from all of that. If we go up to the, up the back. <clears throat> hey, Jesus. How are you going, mate? Yeah, I'm okay. Um... I was just reflecting on what you were saying about wanting to see myself the way God sees me. Mm -hmm. And since I've started on this path, um, I've discovered a lot of things about myself that I didn't know. Yep. That are not very nice. Yep. And when you talk about the fear that we're not willing to engage... Can, um, can I just stop you for a sec, though? Sure. When you say you see a lot of things about yourself that are not very nice, can I just sort of correct that viewpoint for a little. Sure. Because when you say that, you're basically saying that here's your soul, right? And all of those things that you see that are not nice, you believe are a part of your soul. In other words, you believe they're a part of your character in nature. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. That is completely incorrect from God's perspective. They're not a part of your character in nature. They're the mud that's been thrown at you that you have now acted upon. They're not a part of your character and nature. The reality is all of those things that are like a cake on your soul that you don't like, that are all dirty parts, what you see, what you see as dirty parts of your own soul, yep. they're not parts of your own soul. God didn't create them. People around you and your own choices created them. But it feels like that's all that I am. I know, but that's an error. See, if you had faith that God created your soul, you would not believe that error. And therefore, you would be willing to feel those emotions to release them. And when you release them, you'd no longer believe this. Do you see? Yep. You see, this is the problem, is that you don't have faith that God created a pristine soul, which is what you really are inside, and there's all this mud that's caked around the outside of the pristine soul. I'll do it in a different colour. All this black stuff that's carried around the outside of this pristine soul, right? And you're now looking at that in the mirror and going, that's me. It's not you. It's stuff that can come out of you, right? And this false belief that you want to hold on to that it's you stops you from letting it go. And I feel that that's what stops me from... Wanting to see how God sees me because I'm scared that God only sees the false belief that I hold on to. Exactly. See, your own, the problem is you're only seeing that. But God sees all of you. God sees the bit that God created that is the beautiful, pristine parts. God sees that too. And part of what God wants you to face is the truth that God created all these beautiful parts too that you're not seeing. You don't want to face that. 
Because, you, because all you see when you look in the mirror is all these muddy bits, right, that are caking the soul, and then you judge that as you. you. You think it's you. It's not you. It's just the mud that's on you. It's sort of like, let me put it another way, another analogy for you. If I got you, right, and rolled you in the mud, you know, our clay on our dam's pretty muddy, you'd, you'd come up and you'd be caked with the stuff, right? It'd be everywhere in your ears, in your nose, in your eyes, in your mouth, your body would be caked with it. If you had clothes on, you wouldn't even see the mud after the because there'd be so much mud, right? That's how much mud there is in the dam. So, so this is what... So when you go now and look in the mirror, do you go, wow, you're now so disgusting, you shouldn't ever have a wash. <laughs> no. What do you do? You go, wow, you're looking pretty disgusting at the moment. <laughs> you need to have a wash, don't you? Yeah. Isn't that what you do? Yeah. And, and you're confident, aren't you, in that place, that when you have a wash, that the majority, if not all, of that mud that you now have all over you will be gone, are you not? Yeah. So why don't you have the same confidence when it comes to your emotions? It's because you don't have faith in that process, right? And you need to ask for faith and develop faith in that process by experiencing it. For the majority of people, we're looking at all this mud, we're calling it ourselves, and then we decide we're not going to let it go because we don't believe we're able. And God knows, no, God's trying to say to you, nah, 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 just face the truth for a bit. This mud that's on you, I didn't put it there. I created your soul. This is what God's saying. I created your soul and I put no mud on it. You've gone and other people have gone and rolled you around in the mud. That's what's happened. Yep. Now, you can have a wash or you can stay muddy the rest of your life. What do you choose? I'd like to have a wash. Now, obviously, it would make sense to choose to have a wash. But interestingly enough, physically, we will choose to have a wash. But emotionally, what do we choose? We choose to leave it all on there. And not only that, not only do we choose to leave it all on there, but we look at it in the mirror and say, now you're a terribly muddy person. And then the next day, you're a terribly muddy person and it's getting worse. And the next day, it's terrible. This is the person you've become. That's what you believe. It's not true. It's not true. This is the person that has got mud over them that can be washed off. And there's only one way, God's way, of washing it all off. But it involves you exercising your will in harmony with some faith in God, in harmony with the belief that love will cure all things, and, and, the, and wanting to know the truth about what's there. You know, It's like, if you don't know there's truth that there's mud in your ear, do you think you're going to get something and clean it out? No, you leave it in and somebody will come along. You didn't wash yourself very well. There's still mud in your ear, right? Someone will tell you the truth. And we're not even relying on that. That God's universe is all constructed in a manner to allow ourselves to see the complete truth about what is going on. So we need to understand that God, from God's perspective, God created a pristine soul. Any mud that's on our soul is the result not only what have happened to us in the past, but also, and very much primarily, a result of our personal choices. Now, we can wash that mud off through a process, just like you can physically wash the mud off your body through a process. But it is going to be involve you taking some personal effort. And the problem is when you believe that you are not the pristine soul and you believe this is a part of you, you then get away with making no effort. Does that make sense? And almost, it's a, almost a way to, to go into this, we go into this self-delusional place where we believe that it's useless making an effort. And to be honest, a lot of us like that. Because we don't want to make an effort. A lot of us don't want to make one. And so we like that. We like making the excuse that it's a part of us. Rather than just making an effort to go and have a shower from God's perspective. And release this emotional baggage that we have that will make us clean. Yeah? Yeah. 
I've had this um, understanding that the soul was like your emotions, your feelings, your errors. Yep. And I, I don't, this is kind of something different that well, you're no, saying. No, I'm saying that when these emotions hit us, they do enter us, of course. But they're not a part of our pristine self. They've become a part of us, but they're not our real self. We can release them. Look, the reality is this, from a, from a logical perspective. If something has entered us, it makes sense that the same thing can also be released from us. Does it not? From a logical perspective, that makes sense. So if we look at it from our emotional perspective, let's say the emotion of anger towards men has entered us. Right? Which is the emotion you feel. You have the ability to release it. Because it, the fact that it entered you means that you also have the ability to release it. Right? There are certain things you're not going to be able to change inside of you that God created. So God created some things about your personality, for example, that you are never going to be able to change. In fact, you'll get to the point where you want to grow them, you, you want to expand them. Right? There are things that you can't, some of those things you can't change. But a lot of the things that we believe are our personality aren't our personality. Like, if you believe your personality is that you don't like men very much, that's not a personality. That's an emotion that's entered your soul and can be released. It's just like, and this is why I like to liken it as mud on the outside of your soul. And you just have a wash. So the, the illustration that I'm giving, remember when I give illustrations, and I'm not talking about actual reality, I'm talking about the illustration is, we've got the mud around our soul, it got there, it can be washed off. Right? And this is the case with all of our negative belief systems, all of our negative emotions, all of our lack of love that exists within us can all be washed off. The whole lot can believe us. But it's only going to leave us by our use of our will. I am the only person who has control over my own soul. So if this is me, that's my soul, whatever is in it right now, I am the only person who can choose to make the choice of releasing whatever it is, to having the wash, if you like. I'm the only person that can do it. It's only by the use of my will that it's going to happen. God's not going to come along and wa wa wave some magical wand and go, okay, you're all now clean and you didn't have to do anything. God's not going to do that. Never will, in fact. You know, there's no blood sacrifice. Really, what a lot of us want is a blood sacrifice. Do you know what I mean by a blood sacrifice? This Christian belief that Jesus died for your sins and so none of you need to worry about your sins anymore because all you have to do is believe that Jesus died for your sins and all of your sins are all washed away as a result. The reality is many of you want to believe that. And why would we want to believe that? Because we don't want to have to use our own will to take some kind of action in order to release what's there. That's why we believe it. That's why we want it. Right? Once we come to understand God's truth, we come to understand, no, actually, God's truth is that every single one of us is individually responsible for ourselves. We are individually responsible for every single thing we've choose, we choose to do. We are, in fact, individually responsible for the retention of every emotion within our soul. We're not individually responsible necessarily for its creation, because it might have been created by events that have occurred around us. But now that it's in us, we are responsible for its retention. We are responsible for it staying within us. And if we want it out of us, we are going to have to take some choice or decision that's different. That's the reality. We're going to have to make a different choice. So what I would like to encourage each of you to do is tonight, when you, if you feel like discussing this more tomorrow, think about what you would like to ask about these matters. Right? in terms of living your life in harmony with these particular principles in order to develop your relationship with God further and ask the questions tomorrow that you would like to ask about how that can be improved. And you could even ask how you think you're going. 
with you know what, what do you feel how do you feel things are going for you personally in terms of some of these things you can ask those questions too if you're brave enough to do it and actually have it recorded and I feel that what myself and Mary have decided is we are not going to be doing any more seminars here in Mergen uh, for some time to come the main reason why we've decided it is because we feel that the majority of the people who are here are still like using the seminars as a way to come to something but not to actually deal with the actual issues that are raised during them does that make sense not to actually so we would like to see you all become more personally responsible for your own relationship with God and the problem is we feel the more that we um, have interactions with you that have no that bear little or no fruitage the the more what we're doing is supporting some of these addictions that you're unwilling to go through many of you need to get angry many of you need to feel your fears more many of you need to address some of your grief more many of you need to be more honest about how you truly feel about your neighbor you need to have all of these things occurring and we, we don't feel that having more information presented to you is going to help you do that. We feel we've already presented enough information about all of those things. In fact, uh, we feel that we've presented so much information that, uh, that some of you are overwhelmed with information without applying it. Do you know what I mean? Like you get to a point where you just go, I'm at saturation now. I can't handle any more. I can't hear any more. <laughs> I can't act on any more. And those kind of things. And that was all a lot of times driven by fear as well. And what we would like to see is if you want a seminar here in the future, that you start working your way through some of these particular issues. There's another reason why we've decided to do what we're doing too, is that we're no longer going to present truths or new truths in the form of a seminar. We feel that many times the seminar format uh, lends itself more to questions and answers, more, lends itself more to that engagement of, of, of all sorts of subjects, rather than one single subject, because often we present or try to present one subject only to have that subject like finished up, you know, a lot of information being presented that's not really related to the subject. So what we've decided to do... <coughs> is to present information related to specific subjects through these, these processes of frequently asked questions and YouTube information that we'll put on YouTube and then we'll provide the opportunity of having questions and answers at a seminar so that people can ask questions about those particular subjects that have been going for six months or the last three months or whatever personal questions you might have. So that's what we're going to do in the future. Um, rather than doing what we've been doing up until this point in time with regard to seminars. What we feel for many of you is there is a strong need for you to examine your fears right? and to be far more honest with yourself. Now, we've got some things that we're putting on YouTube coming up about progression, about what's going on for most people about their progression, why they're finding progression difficult, why they feel stagnant and things like that. And we're hoping that those particular individual interactions will help you understand what's going on in your own life with regard to a lot of the subjects that we, we, we raise. Rather than have, having a subject half covered in a seminar, what we hope to do is fully cover it in an interaction that myself and Mary and a few other people that we invite have in those for, to, to discuss those matters. Does that make sense to everyone? That's, the, that's where we're headed anyway. We um, have also thinking of doing some, seminar, uh, some uh, presentations that we put on YouTube related to world events and what's happening right now and how love would be able to solve spe specific world event issues. Does that make sense? So many of you may be aware, for example, that in a lot of countries at the moment, the issue of homosexuality is becoming a... A law based issue and there are countries that are voting and have just voted when we were in England uh, they were just voting on the issue of whether homosexuals should be able to marry 
um, for example. And in other countries, such as in Russia, it, it's actually been banned. Homosexuality has been banned uh, with the threat of imprisonment in Russia. So, so there's whole countries now that are being very polarised on the issue of homosexuality. So that's probably one of the issues that we'll probably raise in some of these discussions. There's issues in Australian government and world, other Western world governments about uh, asylum seekers and what should happen with people who are coming in from other countries. And we want to raise all the issues of love involved with all of those kind of things. So we're thinking of having a few presentations along those lines as well so that we can raise the issues of love involved in specific world events. We're also wanting to... Um, do a lot more frequently asked questions. I don't know if many of you have had the chance to look at them, um, but a lot of the frequently asked questions mean that we can give specific answers on a specific question that's fairly concise and comprehensive. And, uh, and we're really enjoying doing those question and answers. And so I think there's about 280 or 290 of them that we've done so far. And we're hoping to, by the end uh, of the next year, by the end, you know, by one year's time, have a good thousand of them finished so that so that people when people come along um, they can look at and get specific answers to specific questions that they can do a search on on the net and find the answers to so that's the reason why we're doing those kind of things now so that's where we're headed and um, tomorrow what we'll do is I'll open to you uh, for Q&A and um, can I say to you today though you've been very disengaged today as an audience have you noticed that there's a very heavy spirit, like spirit influence uh, on you as an audience. There's a strong uh, feelings of wanting to avoid, which we've been feeling. The reason why we feel that we can't do any more seminars here is because we've been feeling that now for the last three or four seminars here. And, and we feel that many of you are under heavy spirit influence because you're unwilling to address some addictions that you have you're getting under more and more heavy spirit influence. And to be frank with you, we feel many of you over the next six months, if you don't do something about it, will find that you don't want anything to do with divine truth anymore. That's what we feel will happen for many. So we would encourage you to go back over some of the, in the information we've presented about spirits and their influence and work through some of the addictions that cause these influences to occur. Uh, we've just done a series of FAQs on spirits as well, just to assist you in that regard, to work your way through what's going on from a spirit influence perspective. There are now, in the spirit world, organised groups of spirits who specifically attack any person who wishes to find uh, or have anything to do with divine truth. So they're just going around... From any, every new person gets attacked through by these spirits almost immediately as soon as they find divine truth. And, um, and that is a, a big issue that many of us face. And for those of us who have been listening for a long time and finding ourselves quite stagnant, the more you stagnate, the harder you're going to find your life. So my suggestion to you is to have some trust in God Trust in love, trust in using your will, have some faith, have some humility and work through the issues that you're stagnant on rather than holding on to them. Because the more you hold on to them, the harder this is going to get for you. If you release them, it doesn't, it doesn't get hard. It only gets hard when you hold on to them. So let yourself release. Let yourself go through the process. Let yourself go through the process even though other people might not agree with it. Allow yourself to do those things. What we're going to do after the break is uh, Fab is going to get up and sing a bit and I'll probably join him for a bit so my voice is feeling okay so, uh, so we'll do that after the break and tomorrow we'll have two hours or so of question and answer and then we'll have another uh, session where we'll do some singing and stuff so that's what we'll do tomorrow Does that sound alright? So if you don't want to stick around for the singing Feel free to leave uh, whenever you want. Uh, you might want to eat some of the food first before you leave, uh, if you're going to do that. Um, if you do want to stick around, then uh, please stick around and we'll try or attempt to... I'm sure Fab will entertain you. And um, as I said, my voice isn't that good at the moment, so we'll see what happens there. I might turn you off. Um, remember that Thomas and, and si are 
filming and if you'd like to speak with them or, or be interviewed by them, feel free to uh, approach them and they'd be happy to interview you either today or tomorrow or even tomorrow after the session, tomorrow. So feel free to approach them if you'd like uh, or want to be involved in that. But thanks for your time today, guys. And uh, can I suggest, just trust God more, huh? Trust God more. Because like, honestly, the peop- what we notice is the people who are enthusiastically trusting God, trusting the process, their lives are changing very rapidly and they are having a lot more joy in their life. And notice those people amongst the group and ask them, what are they doing? What's going on for you? Why, why is that happening for you? you know, ask them questions about that. Because there are some people that are doing that. And they will be able to help you through this process of feeling stagnant and feeling down and feeling like oppressed, which are all feelings that many of you are feeling. You're feeling oppressed and down and under, under the weather. And my suggestion is a lot of that is because we're unwilling to feel certain addictions that we have. And if you can allow yourself to release them, that would be fantastic. So that's what we'd encourage you to do. Before we finish, I'd just like to thank uh, you for your donations, both not only at the seminars, but also those of you who donate to us regularly uh, through the bank and through the internet, because uh, without your donations, uh, we wouldn't obviously be able to consider doing almost everything that we're currently doing. And so we'd like to thank you for your donations and, and the gifts that you've given to us uh, in appreciation for what's, ha- for, for what's been given to yourself. Um, may I mention, we will be travelling overseas again uh, in a month and a half's time or two months' time. Uh, there's a group of people in the USA who want us to go to, go to the USA. So we're visiting, uh, at this stage, three places in the USA, Philadelphia, um, San, Di- uh, Philadelphia San Diego and... We're not sure yet, but somewhere in Texas. Um, And we're actually staying somewhere in Texas with a group of people for two weeks. So that'll be interesting uh, to see what comes up there. Um, So there's people in the US who have wanted to engage that for some time. So we've decided to make some time available to do that. So we we will go away uh, sometime in October and we won't be back in Australia until December sometime. So... um, would you like us to um, reference your love for them while we go away? Yes. Would you like to do that? Yeah. No worries. Thanks. So there's two of you that like us to do that. So we'll do, we'll do that for the two of you. <laughs> do you want to do that or not? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do that. And uh, they they would. One of the things we we get a lot of emails from people overseas wanting to express their appreciation to you. And in particular, they want to express their appreciation to you for asking personal questions on the same issues that they have problems with. So they want to express their appreciation to you for your bravery in asking those kinds of questions that allow them then to work their way through specific issues. And many of them believe they know you very well. Of course, of course, that's not necessarily true. They only know you through seeing you on the video. But um, they, uh, they would like to express to you their appreciation for being open and honest about your own individual issues in a public setting that's so public that anyone around the world can learn from it. And I, and I feel that's a wonderful thing that you've done as a gift for other people. Monique, would you like to say something? And then we'll finish. I, I just wanted to um, really say thank you to you, Jesus and Mary, really. And um, I'm, I'm sure I'm not alone in saying that, that um, even though you feel those, you know, that we're stagnating or, or whatever, but... Um, Sorry. Yeah, don't misinterpret my talk with you today, though, Monique. Uh, and I feel personally Like, I'm excited. not judgmental about where you're at. Yeah. I can just see many of you in a lot of personal distress now. Yeah. And what I'm trying to do is point out the reasons why. Because, I, you know, obviously when we see you in this personal distress, we feel for you, you know, we, we feel concern for your situation. We understand that many times 
it's because of the choices you're making as to why you're in the places you're in. But, and so that's why we're willing to be straightforward and honest with you about those choices that you're making. But please don't view it as judgment because that's not how we feel. How myself and Mary feel is that we feel we want to help you get out of this place where, where you're constantly trying to feed your fears and into the place where you honour these primary facets of your day-to-day -day interaction with God. So, yeah, if, if all of you can remember that, that we're not here to berate you or to make you feel bad about or worse than yourself about yourself than you already feel. What we're trying to do is show you where the problem is. Does that make sense? And for many of us, the problem is we're not honest with ourselves or we're not humble or we don't have faith or we're using our will out of harmony with love and we don't really want to love. That is our problem. And what we're trying to do is show you where the problems are. If you have a problem with your, with your relationship with God stagnating, it's always because of one of these things. There's no other reason. It's always because of one of these things, being exercised out of harmony with the way in which God's created her universal laws. So, and all we want to do is expose that to you so that you have a choice to either work on it or not. It's up to you what you do. We would love to see you work on it because then you'll make changes and, and honestly, the reality is, the way to measure whether something is really happening is the amount of large changes that are occurring in your life in terms of how other people see you mm. and how other people are drawn to you. Mm. That's how you can measure a lot of change. Mm. So, um, yeah, please don't interpret it as no, no, um, I, feeling I, like we feel you're stagnant and you've got to change. No, that's I, I feel pretty yeah. excited to be honest that after three and a half years of actually, oh, this is what truth is about. Like, if you actually live in truth, I really just felt that this morning. And, wow, I didn't get that for three and a half years of what truth. Exactly. Hello. And, yeah. how, and how there can be joy and there can be excitement. And, man, like, wow, I miss that one. And, yeah. and oh, God's love, like, that was only a recent thing. Oh, hello, like, love, like, that it's about love this path like <laughs> hello I miss that one oh and yep. I don't have to push myself into emotion humility oh man like years and years and then it's like there's a bit of excitement there it's not like yeah. it's not a chore like but yeah. as soon as the faith goes down it's like well there's darkness there's spirits and yeah. and everything turns black again exactly and but it's yeah. pretty cool and we, we feel too what you're going through as a group Pretty much everybody after two or three years initially you're going to finish up going through uh, as individuals because that, that's the way it is. You know, most of the time we have a whole fiction about our life and ourselves and our real emotions and all those kind of things that have to be exposed somehow. And sooner or later they get exposed. God's beautiful like that. God always exposes anything that's out of harmony with love and out of harmony with our growth. And so, you know, the only reason why we say these kind of talks, where we're a bit firmer about some things about how things really are, is because we, we want you to be able to see what's going on for you. That's all. And not, not because we feel like you've got to change or you have to change or any of those other things. We'd just like to show you why you're in distress, what's going on really. And, and I feel that if you can look at those things more sincerely you will be relieved of a lot of the distress that you feel as a result. And you'll feel some positive feeling of working forward from that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Thank so, you. But thanks for your, Thank you very thanks much, for your appreciation. Yes. Okay, so we'll have a break now for... What's the time? 10 to 4. 10 to 4. 10 to 4. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. A bit long. Uh, so that means I went... 40 minutes over time. Okay. And so maybe if we say, well, we'll start singing when we feel like it, and you can join us whenever you want. How's that? Thanks, guys. <laughs>